It has been a soggy weekend here across the Red River Valley, but finally the rain has stopped. The track is just about set and we are ready to go racing. Live dirt track racing here at River City Speedway in Grand Forks here on Midco Sports. Brian, Sean, Chris Shearick, thanks so much for joining us here this evening. Three classes on tap, including the NLRA late models. And Chris, it's going to be interesting to see how the track responds after so much rain has fallen here in the last 72 hours. Yeah, uh, the track's actually looking really, really nice. Um, the track crews actually added a little bit of water today. Um, so that's a good sign the track's not oversaturated. So it should be, it should just be a normal track. Yeah, we'll see how everything shakes out here as we get set to go here in just a couple of moments. Mike Griseth has really been a great story here on the NLRA late model circuit. This is a guy that was driving modifieds throughout his career, made the switch to late models two years ago, and he's back-to-back -back NLRA late model champion. Yeah, he, uh, he, he kind of came onto the late model scene, made a, made a, instant splash and he was an instant contender from day one pretty pretty exciting to see mike Gresseth continuing to lead the standings here after winning that championship in 21 and 22 as we take a look at the updated standings dustin strand has come on here lately cole shill brad sank some familiar names chasing Gresseth there at the top of the standings yeah there's a lot of a lot of familiar familiarity with the uh i would say really the top five and even the top 10 there's there's a lot of names that are they've been around for a long time now, and on the other side, we have two other classes that is set to compete here tonight as well. Street Stocks, one of them. The other is the Lightning Sprint Circuit. And this is a class that has continued to grow and grow. And Kate Taves from Detroit Lakes leads the national standings. Kelsey Peterson, very well-known name here around Grand Forks area right behind her. Yeah, uh, Kelsey's got a um, mother and father that both race. Her dad still races. Brother races. It's just a big family that's racing. Yeah, Matt Taves is the brother of Kate Tapes. He's only 12 years old, his second year in a lighting spray. We've really seen a youth movement with that particular class. Well, we will step aside and have the first heat race of action coming up on the other side of this timeout. It's live dirt track racing here from the Bull Ring in Grand Forks. Thanks so much for joining us as we take a look at some of the folks enjoying some of the other festivities here with the Grand Forks County Fair. Back in a moment. Back live here at River City Speedway in Grand Forks. Brian, Sean, Chris, Shearick, our entire Midco Sports crew. Pleased to be with you here. It is fair weekend. Grand Forks Cloudy County Fair. You see some of the rides in the backdrop there. As folks are finally able to get outside and enjoy some of this after we have seen an influx of rain and moisture here throughout the weekend. Let's take a look at our Hugo starting grid. Starting with the street stocks, Tucker Peterson. Last time he took the track here at River City Speedway, he won in the 27P. Josh Barker on his outside. Rachel McNamee and Weston Ramsrud in row two. Johansson and Trey Hess. And then Greg Josie, Royce Jawaski, and Seth Klostreich will round out your field as some of the buses that we will see later tonight. Yes, the bus races were supposed to happen last night. That race got rained out. So we're going to have the bus races to round out our coverage here this evening, Chris, and that is a, a unique event for us to be able to cover. Yeah, it, it certainly is. Uh, it's, it, it really excites the kids. It's, it, it excites the fans, the adults. Everybody gets pretty excited to, to watch these buses go around in a, in a circle in, in about 15, 20 second lap times. <laughs> And again, we're not racing the buses right now. They're just coming out for a little parade lap. Th that will be the last thing that is that is run here tonight is the feature for the bus races. So you see them full of people. Don't worry, not all those people are, are going racing. There's no safety issue right now. There will only be one person strapped in that's driving that thing, and that'll be it. Yep, uh, the 4-H kids are in the, in the buses right now. They're getting a lap before, kind of checking out. Uh, Checking out the, the festivities here. I always get a kick out of how well these things are decorated. They come up with some really clever ways of, of painting these and different themes too. I, I want to say a couple years ago they would they would take these buses to certain schools and then the school would decide on how like how to make or like what design they're gonna pick and and that's that's what they would go with. Is this kind of a rite of passage thing? I mean you were offered a chance to drive one of these one time, weren't you? I was, yes. 
and, and you declined. Uh, I declined. <laughs> it, it was uh, I, had, I had a pretty important race that night, so I didn't want to. I didn't want to race, you know, middle of the race. And I wanted to focus more, but it was. Uh, it's fun. Well, you know, not everybody gets to drive one of these, and it's. it's it, it would be. It would have been a, a lot of fun to drive one. That's for sure. So a little bit of a parade lap there for three of the buses. Some of the fans, some of the 4-H kids, as you mentioned, getting a chance to get out here on the track before our first street stock heat race. There will be two heat races here in the street stocks. Two more heat races coming up in the lightning sprints, and that'll follow be followed by four heat races in the late model class. 27 late models are signed in, 17 lightning sprints, along with 17 street stocks. And again, we're not sure if all of those cars are going to be here as we take a look at the point standings. John Halverson is the leader, but as you can see, it's very hotly contested. Yeah, the top four is within uh, 13 positions. So, I mean, it's, it's really anybody's, um, anybody's points race right now. Even Greg's got a chance with a little bit of bad luck with the top four, but any one of those top four you can see on the podium from the champion circle here at the end of the year. Trey Hess, as we talked about, will start on the outside of row three. And Hess is a guy that doesn't run points regularly here. He kind of bounces around between a bunch of different tracks throughout the region. But he's got four wins this season, one at Devil's Lake, one at Cheyenne Speedway, one at River City Speedway. So he's had success pretty much everywhere he's gone. He did not finish, though, last night at Madison, South Dakota. Yeah, every once in a while he gets some bad luck. You know, hopefully he can shake off the, the bad luck bug and, and return to victory lane here tonight. Trying to get the track ready to roll. They're kind of fanning out a little bit, just making sure it's race ready. And again, it's taken a lot of water. But as you mentioned, Chris, they were putting more water on the track when we arrived here about 90 minutes ago. Yeah, it's, uh, the, the track typically in, in Grand Forks here, the track will be dry or drier. It's the pits that kind of get uh, the brunt of all the, the moisture here. Um, yeah, it's the, the track's looking really good. It's a little wet right now, but that's that's about typical for hot laps and, and heat, like the first couple heat races. See the 27P there of Tucker Peterson. That's a look at Trey Hess, the young man we were talking about out of Grand Forks. You'll notice that throughout the evening, no matter what the class, a lot of these drivers from here, there's a lot of race car drivers in Grand Forks. If you put the per capita, there's a lot of guys and a lot of gals that race out of this community. Yeah, it's when, when you uh, when you grow up with a racetrack in your backyard, it's it's hard not to want to be a race car driver. And, uh, you know, 20, 20 some odd people a year get to get to actually experience that, you know, per class. So there's there's a handful of people. So it's it's, it's exciting. Seth Clawstrike slated to finish in to start in the fifth row, I should add and, and Klaus Drake, another guy to Grand Forks, won the first two races of the season at River City Speedway and also at Devil's Lake, was sixth last Friday here at River City Speedway and then third at Devil's Lake one week ago on Saturday. Three wins overall in the season. So you got a lot of strong, strong cars in this first heat. It should be exciting. They're uh, they're getting a couple a uh, couple hot laps here just trying to like you said, trying to work in the track a little bit. It must be a little bit greasier than it looks like up here. Josh Barker from Thompson on the front throw, row there with Peterson. He did not finish his last two races, was seventh here at River City Speedway way back on June 7th. Barker and Peterson will take us to green eventually. <laughs> yeah, they showed them the one to go, so they must not have been too happy with something. Yellow flag still out. They're giving him the one to go. 
Rachel McNamee and Weston Ramsrud of Bagley, Minnesota in row two. Johansson Hess in row three as we're finally set to get rolling here at River City Speedway on fair weekend. And we're underway. Peterson takes him to the green flag. Rams are a big move, and a couple of cars got into each other there. That was McNamee that got tied up with Greg Josie. And Josie has a lot of work to do now to catch the rest of the pack here in front. Peterson continues to lead. Rams are around Barker for second. Trey Hess battling with Royce Jawaski. Those two continue to go at it as we head into turns three and four. Peterson. Leading by eight tenths of a second that last lap. Barker continues to run third. And here comes Jawaski looking to pass Hess on the inside. Has a nice run on him and he moves into fourth place. Seth Klostrike has moved his way up into the sixth position. Four laps to go. Klostrike trying to catch Hess for that fifth spot. Three laps to go, and McNamee almost caught here by the leaders. So Peterson might have to deal with a little bit of lap traffic here, Chris. There goes Klostrike to the inside on Trey Hess. Yeah, Seth's got a nice little run on the bottom here going into one. And he's able to make the pass as Hess continues to run that high line, and that really hasn't done him favors. Now, Klostroik slid up to the high part of the track coming out of turn two as we take the white flag. Barker now putting the pressure on Ramsrud. Ramsrud to the high side. Barker nowhere to go with the lapper in front of him. And the Buffalo Wild Wings checkered flag will go to the 27P of Tucker Peterson, followed by Ramsrud and Barker. Nice run there by Royce Jawaski as well out of Adrian, North Dakota. Finishing fourth, we'll step aside and be back with heat race number two for the street stocks in a moment. Back for heat race number two for the street stocks. And here is your Hugo starting grid. Rodney Hulse, James Meager will take you to the green flag. Stony Crook, Drew Peterson. John Halverson, one win this season at Buffalo River. Excuse me, that was a green bush he got his victory. Braden Bauer, Derek Turner, and Cole Gresseth. Your eight cards for heat race number two. Hulse and Meager take him to the green flag. A little bit of a slower pace here as they're all bunched up going into turn one and two and bouncing off each other a little bit here, Chris. Yeah, a <laughs> little, little bit of a slow start on the on the front row. I don't know if they knew we were going green right away or not, but it's uh, starting to spread out a little bit. Still some trading of paint there as the 69 of Stony Crook has moved in to second place. Stony out of Langdon. And John Halverson, he started the inside of row three. He's already moved up to third place, and he's got his eyes on second. Yeah, Tenty John's, Tenty John, of Derek Turner also moving up. Yeah, John's one of those guys. He's uh, he's pretty familiar with with victory lane here at River City, so it's it's not not uncharacteristic for him to be up front. Boy, they are three wide going into three and four as they all continue to battle for second, third, fourth, and fifth. And Braden Bauer has kind of come out of nowhere as the 69 of Stony Crook got out of shape and boy he fell out of the groove and dropped several positions. Yeah, I got a little loose coming out of two and and got tagged from behind and. And uh, now he's sitting in about fifth place, sixth place right now. John Halverson out of Warren, Minnesota. Trying to catch the leader. Meager has led every lap. But with three to go, Halverson has his eyes and his sights set on taking the top spot. Really good drive there going through one and two on the inside. Yeah, James got a nice little run coming out of the corner, but John's got that bottom working pretty solid. 
And they do touch a little bit with two laps to go. Meager continuing to hold off the hard charging John Halverson. Braden Bauer has moved all the way up to third after starting on the outside of row three. And Cole Gresseth having himself a nice drive now up to fourth. Yeah, the top four have kind of pulled away from the, the rest of the field here. It's, it's really anyone's race. Boy, Bauer has really closed the gap here on Halverson and maybe as we come to the checkered flag, a chance to steal a spot. Buffalo Wild Wings checkered flag is out. And oh, I do believe that Bauer did get Halverson there for second, and he did. Just barely there at the line. Oh, good race there, good action. A lot of position swapping going on. We'll be back with your lightning sprints when we come back. Back with our Hugo's Marketplace. Starting grid for the Lightning Sprints. Dexter Bergson, always the car to beat in the Lightning Sprints. He has been almost dominant here throughout the Midwest. Evan Janish on his outside. Kelsey Peterson, we talked about her in the open with Dylan Langevin, another youngster in row two. Gerald Haddlestead and Kate Taves in row three. Jason Berg, another veteran racer. Really busy on his schedule and some of the things he does with Lori Yerke on his outside as well. Does look like one of the cars did not make the call here. Nine cars slated to start, but only eight are out here as we take the green flag. And not a surprise, but Bergson out in front of everybody on a long shot. You put that guy in the pole. Kelsey Peterson shooting to the inside and takes a couple of spots away. Good battle there for second with Langevin. Kate Taves has moved up to fifth as she's battling with Jason Berg. And Evan Janish still in the mix as well. Peterson continues to battle with Langevin. And Bergson has checked out. <laughs> yeah, Dexter's got it, uh, got it figured out from the front row here today. Jason Berg trying to make a move on the outside. And it's been really tough for Taves and Berg to make a move around the 40 of Janish. Yeah, Berg's the only guy using the, or utilizing the top of the track right now. Everyone else is not running the bottom. So he's got the long way around, but he's using momentum. And Berg takes the high side and makes the pass and slingshots past two cars to take over the fourth position. Taves has finally been able to get past Janish for fifth. White flag is out for Bergston. Boy, he leads by two and a half seconds over second place, Dylan Langevin. And coming to the Buffalo Wild Wings checkered flag, it's Dexter Bergston easily with the heat race victory. Langevin followed by Peterson. Jason Berg able to hold off Kate Taves for fourth. And Janish will take sixth position. That'll do it for heat race number one here on the Lightning Sprints. He race number two will be on the tech track when we come back. A look at the Hugo starting grid. Weston Olson, Matthew Taves in row one. Van Drew and Bjerke. Sean Enright, Mark Williams, and the two Truzinskis, that's father and son, Alex and Allen, here in row four. Getting set for the green flag, coming out of turn four, and we are underway. Weston Olsen out to the lead. Matt Taves follows him as we take a look at the home of economy drone cam. Beautiful shot here of the bullring. Just gives you an idea of how wide this racetrack is. Yeah, that's a pretty cool shot seeing, uh, seeing something you don't normally see from the, from the grandstands every week. Brad Bjerke giving chase, and just like that, Alex Truzinski has moved all the way up to fourth, and Alan Truzinski up to sixth, and one car looks like to be it, it is off the pace. And that is the eight of Wesley Van Drunen. Van Drunen had something go, came off the pace, coming out of turn four, and is trying to limp that thing back to the pits, and that'll bring us to our first caution flag of the evening. Van Drunen, a season best fifth place finish at Buffalo River two weeks ago, eighth at River City's last Friday. And I don't think that car is gonna be able to make it back. It's going to need a little help. 
Really good start by Weston Olson out of Warren. Matt Taves. You talked about him. They're 87, just 12 years old. His first year last year as an 11-year-old jumped in, making the run. Raced four-wheelers, raced go-karts. That's pretty amazing. That That is pretty awesome. It, uh, I raced when I was 14 years old, and I thought that was pretty young. And and seeing somebody younger than that and doing so well, that's that's pretty awesome to see. We will feature Matt and Kate Taves, brother-sister duo out of Detroit Lakes, and our intermission as we take a look at the Lightning Sprint's standings. Berkson, no surprise, but Berg right there, Taves right there, Peterson, always a threat as well. Yeah, and, you know, like the street stocks, it's, they're, I mean, it's anybody's race, you know, in this top five. I mean, they're, I mean we got a three-way tie for, for third. So it's, it's anyone's race, it's five positions, it's any one of these five can be on the, on the podium at the end of the year. And we talked about the Truszynskis, Allen and Alex, father-son, finished first and second in the Nationals points last season. Alex was the champ, recognized in Ozark, Missouri last January. They've been very fast. They kind of run around a bunch of different tracks. So no surprise that they've been able to move ahead in the field. Looks like one of the Truszynskis also pulled off. I believe that was the father Alan Truszynski, the 13 that was out there, and then there was a little puff of smoke, and he is off the track as well right now. So only six cars remain in this first, this second heat race. Yeah, the first couple laps have been pretty brutal on these cars, but this heat race. Olson will take us to green. Taves will chase him right around into turn number one. Really good start that time for the 11 of Brad Bjerke. Krasinski trying to run that whole line. Yerke will try to hold him off. Five laps to go. Mark Williams in the 1W runs fifth. Followed by Sean Enright of Grand Forks in the 7S. It's tough for anybody to really gain ground right now. Everybody running about the same pace, Chris. Yeah, everyone's kind of running around a couple, couple uh, spots off the bottom. Just kind of rolling in the track, more or less. Taves almost running the identical lap time as Weston Olsen, but just not able to make a big dent to push for the heat race victory. Truszynski still keeping an eye on Bierke. That's the race for third. White flag is out, one to go. Can Truszynski make a run here in the last couple of laps? Trying to stick it in as the 11 got in and two cars are smoking and the 27 of Weston Olsen blows up going into the final set of turns and what looked like an easy heat race victory. He'll try to just limp it home and is able to get across the finish line just ahead of Sean Enright and what a terrible break there for the 27 of Weston Olsen. Yeah, just it let go. The engine just let go coming down the backstretch, coming to the checkered, and... Olsen looked like he had the heat race all sewed up, but heading into turn three, the motor lets go, and Matt Taves ends up taking the Buffalo Wild Wings checkered flag. Set for our late models, 27 entries set. We're not sure if we have all 27 here, but that's how many signed up coming into the day. Greg Moore, Ryan Corbett in your first row. Lance Schill had a really exciting victory here about a month ago in the World of Outlaws, battling with Brad Sang. He is on row two with Jason Strand in the E85. Brandon Fuller, Ryan Dahl in row three, followed by Steve Anderson in the nine. Seven cars in this first heat race. And Ryan Corbett of Grand Forks has been doing this a long time in that C4. One at Greenbush last August, one at River City Speedway in July, been racing since 1994, and he really stunned everybody last fall. There were a ton of heavy hitters here for the Sites Memorial, big time late model race, 9,200 to win, 92 laps. And he was able to start on the pole of that race, had a really good preliminary night, ended up finishing 14th, but he was a guy that opened up a lot of eyes. Not a lot of people expected him to be there. Yeah, he. Uh you know, he, he put together a couple solid laps and, and uh, you know, like you said, started on the pole and and it's just, you know, being on the pole for that, you know, prestigious race, it's that means a lot. So just 
wherever you finish, you finish. So I'm, I'm, I know he's not happy with his 14th place finish, but you know, starting on the pole, that that's something. Just right there, that's that's doing something. And of course, Don Shaw won that event, and Don Shaw wins a lot of late model races around the Midwest. Has been doing it for a long time out of Ham Lake, Minnesota. Talked about Lance Schill, a guy that races a modified, has had a lot of success in that class, has won some races here at River City Speedway in a late model as well, out of Langdon. This is already his 31st event that he has entered here in 2023, Lance Schill. Yeah, he, uh, he he's not scared to, to travel around the country. I know he's raced in Arizona a couple times. He's, he's run all over the place. He, uh, and he's competitive everywhere he goes. And there's a look at the NLRA late model standings. Joey Peterson, or excuse me, that is, that is the track here at River City Speedway. That is the track standings. Strand right there, Brad Seng right there. And Tyler Peterson, a guy we're gonna talk about a little bit, has really come on the scene here and been very impressive in his first year in the late models. So Greg Moore out of Jamestown will start on the pole of this race. Fifth place finish last Friday night here at River Cities. That's actually the best finish he's ever had here at this track. Had a small fire actually break out in the feature at McLean County Speedway. Cooked some wires, says everything is okay. Got the car back together as he takes him to green here in heat race number one. Corbett takes the high line, Strand also the high line. The F9 of Fuller slid up the track a little bit, Schill into third. Greg Moore leads lap one. Corbett giving chase, Schill sliding up the high side, trying to make a move, and Strand in that E85 is up to fourth. Fuller continuing to battle with Strand. Nine of Steve Anderson has been able to move up one spot, passing Ryan Dahl to 33. And Schill, low entry, really slid up to the high side coming out of turn two, and now he'll take the high side. As we have a yellow out, and I believe Anderson in the nine got a little bit out of whack. And the yellow is out. Yeah, Anderson got a little crossed up, and, and Dahl got into him, and... Anderson pulls out the caution. Let's take another look at it, Chris. Now two cars that just got a little bit too hard into the turn. Seven laps to go here in heat race number one for the late models. More. Has led the way as Corbett tries to sneak to the inside and Corbett has a run on him as we head into turn three. Moore able to hold on to that spot. But only two tenths of a second separates first and second. The 85 of Strand has been able to move around Lance Schill for third. So a nice run here for Jason Strand out of Portland. Yeah, the track's widening out a little bit in one and two. It's given a little bit more space to pass. Corbett still trying to stick his nose in there, but nice job by Moore holding his line and hanging on to the lead. Strand getting a little bit closer there from third of the two top cars right now in this heat. Three laps to go. Strand got a little bit out of whack there coming out of turn number three, but it looks like he's okay. And Strand now a run on Corbett as they head in to turn number one. Couldn't quite make it stick. And now Schill throws it hard, almost got into Strand, and he got a little bit banged out of the groove. And that opens the door for Fuller into fourth place as the leaders take the white flag. Final set of turns for the leaders. Greg Moore with the victory. Corbett second, Strand in third. And how about Fuller able to pass Schill with one lap to go as Schill got out of the groove and slid up. And he drops back to fifth. 
The 33 of Ryan Dahl finishing in sixth place, followed by Steve Anderson. Heat race number one in the books. Our second heat race here for the late models. Set to come out on the track when we return. Let's take a look at the Hugo's Family Marketplace. Starting grid for the late models here in heat race number two. Jeff Hoppola in the 16S with Shane Eddington out of Canada to his outside. Tom Corcoran, boy, he's been doing it a long time. Racing five different decades with Cole Schill in row two. Brody Trotgruben, youngster, 24 years old, has really started to come on here the last couple of years with Brandon Corbett and Nicholas Minsky in the one end. Green flag is out. Key race number two is underway. Oh, Eddington had a good start. But excellent job by Hopla kind of battling his way back in, and he will lead the opening lap. Eddington squeezing as Schill takes third. Corcoran up to fourth. And Trotgruben running fifth. Eddington makes the pass stick, and he leads it. With eight laps to go, Cole Schill now putting the pressure on the 16 of Hoppola. Schill sticking to that low line. And Troft Rubin has passed Corcoran for fourth place. And Schill still trying to make that low line stick with Hoppola hanging on and hugging that top groove. Schill might have a run on him, and Schill able to make the pass on the inside. Well, the 16 of Hoppola got way up high on the berm, and that has allowed Corcoran and Trotgerubin to both close in. Corcoran is able to take the spot back from Trotgerubin for fourth. This time around, three laps to go. Eddington has really been able to open up a huge lead. 1.6 seconds last time around over Cole Schill. Eddington won a late model race, race at Greenbush back in early May. Did not finish at I-94 on Friday. Fifth in point standings in NLRA. And he's getting set to take on that white flag. One lap to go. Schill easily into second. Corcoran now up to third. Corcoran able to take third place away from Hoppel and Trotgruben trying to climb one more spot here in the last lap. Buffalo Wild Wings checkered flag goes to Eddington, followed by Schill. Tom Corcoran, great drive up to third. He'll be followed by Hoppel and Trotgruben in fifth. First two heat races for our Lesota Light Models are in the books. Heat race number three when we return. Hugo's starting grid for your late models. Strand and Jesse Tunis in row one. Joey Peterson and Tyler Peterson in row two. Brad saying Mike Balkin. Boy, you have some heavy hitters here in heat race number three, Chris. Yeah, any one of these guys can win this race, let alone, I mean, any one of these guys can win the championship this year. It's, I would say, I would put my money on six of the seven of these guys. Sang and Balkan, you're talking about two veterans, both over two decades of experience. Both have won a lot of races here. Joey Peterson has won a ton of races here. Dustin Strand. And Strand will take us to green here in heat race number three. Tunis to the high side. Tyler Peterson able to sneak through. Brad Sang, Mike Balkan, four wide coming out of turn two. Yeah, there's a lot, a lot, of, a lot of real estate getting used up coming out of two there. Peterson in the second. Tyler Peterson trying to catch Joey. Brad Sang has a good drive as Peterson slid up on the track off the entry in turn number two, and Sang has a set side on the one TPO. Joey Peterson putting the pressure on Dustin Strand. Boy, those two guys have been battling a long time here at River City Speedway. The 56 of Lane Schwer. Last in this heat race, Balkan battling Jesse Tunis. Both of those cars spinning the wheels, they battle for fifth. Peterson has caught Joey Peterson. 
Just three tenths of a second separates the 7P and the 1 TPO. Strand has really pulled out to a nice lead now of 1.1 seconds. Peterson able to make the low line stick and makes the pass there of Joey Peterson. Now Peterson back to the side on the crossover. Sang continuing to run fourth. Balkan has taken over fifth. Four laps to go. Lane Schwer has pulled the 56 off, and now Tunis in the 70 is pulling off as well. So only five cars remaining on the track here in this third heat race. It'd be, uh, it'd be pretty interesting to figure out how many feature wins are on this track right now. A lot of them. Two laps to go. Sang putting the pressure on Joey Peterson. Those two cars only separated by about one car length as the white flag is out. Strand has it on cruise control. Peterson easily into second. And Strand has made the pass on Joey Peterson for third. And that car of Peterson has been a little bit out of whack here in this third heat race. Dustin Strand takes the Buffalo Wild Wings checkered flag. Peterson second, saying third. Joey Peterson in fourth. And Mike Balkin will round out the top five. Track starting to widen out. Good competition across the board. Our last late model heat race when we come back. Most family marketplace, Grid, Presseth, John Seng, Eric Hoagland, Rusty Coleman, Terry Nelson, and Mitch Johnson, just six cars here in your final heat race of the evening. As they're coming to the green flag, coming out of turn number four. Look at the home of economy. Drone shot, beautiful look here on what has turned out to be a beautiful night here at River City Speedway. As Gressev jumps out to the early lead and John Seng into second place. Rusty Coleman out of Carrington into third. And two cars get together there coming out of turn number two. I believe that was Haugland and Mitch Johnson. Mitch Johnson putting the pressure on in the battle for third there with Rusty Coleman. Yeah, Mitch Johnson, he was one of those guys that took a, took a little break from late model racing and came back. I don't know how many years he took a break, whether it was, you know, 10 or 15 years and came back and he's, you know, challenging for wins just like he never, never left. Looks very comfortable out there in that double zero car. Coleman continues to hold him off for that third place. Halfway home here in heat race number four, five laps to go. And we have a caution. It was 54, Terry Nelson that went sliding off the track. And Nelson will Make way back to the track. We've not had many caution flags here, Chris. Just a handful in the heat races. Yeah, the uh, the track still got quite a bit of grip in it, so it's uh, cars aren't really sliding off too much. We've been seeing a lot of guys, you know, getting in trouble in one and two. You know, the, the sun's beating on one and two a little bit, so the track's drying out a little bit more than turn three and four. And Gresseth had built up a 1.1 second lead over second place John Seng in the 21S. Rusty Coleman holding off Mitch Johnson for that third position as we're green again. Five to go. Coleman up high again, and Seng got out of the groove and spun the wheels a little bit and dropped three positions all the way back to fifth and that has opened it up for Coleman now into second place. Saying some work to do as a handful of laps in the 54 of Terry Nelson got sideways again but able to pull it into the infield and we stay green. Hauglin. Got a little tight coming out of turn two, and that has opened up the door for John Singh on the inside to try to get back to the fourth position. Brett's uh, very comfortable in the 17 as he takes the white flag. Coleman second. 
And Mitch Johnson, who started dead last in this heat, up to third. John Singh has made the pass of Hoglin back to fourth. So able to get some of that positioning back after that mistake a couple of laps ago. The Buffalo Wild Wings checkered flag goes to Gresseth, Coleman, Johnson, Seng, and Eric Hoglin rounding out your top five. That'll do it for all of our heat race action. All that's left is our three main events. But before that, we'll have a quick intermission here on Midco Sports and get set for your feature events when we return. So far, so good. A lot of fun here on Midco Sports. We'll be back after this. A perfect time to grab a burger, some cotton candy, anything sugary or greasy. Best thing to eat when it's fair time here at the Grand Force County Fair, and you still see some puddles out there. It has been a very wet weekend out here throughout the Red River Valley. Brian, Sean, Chris Shearick back with you, and the Lightning Sprints has been one of those classes that continues to grow. They go around more tracks. They put on a really good show as well, and it's often one of those classes that helps them get to the next class, which is the 305 class, which has also grown throughout this region as well. well two siblings. They like to battle each other, and they're both still very, very young. Racing is definitely a family affair for the Taves family, and it's been that way from the very beginning. This is how I met my wife at the racetrack, you know, 30 years ago, and her family was raced forever. I raced against her brother, so yeah, it just kind of kind of was natural, I guess. My brother had retired a couple years ago, and so when the kids started go-karts, then my side of the family would come around, and we all just, it was felt like old times. And then we seen these lightning sprints at the track a few times, and thought it'd be a good class to get started in. And so now this is my fourth year racing lightning sprints. So it wasn't a surprise when younger brother Matt wanted to give it a try watching her for two years and then I tested into in her old car and then I got my own car and then started. This is my second year. It definitely took me a lot longer to get used to the cars than it did for Matt um, just because it was brand new to us. Um, but it was always good just learning track to track and each week got better. It kind of amazed me at how young they were and how good they've gotten so quick. Matt was pitting for her for the first couple years and seen how everything was going. Matt also started out with probably a lot better car than Kate did. I know Matt is really into that stuff. He's he's the racer of the family. <laughs> I've raced other things in the past, I guess, so it was a lot faster. It was a hard transition, I guess. Kate, now 17 years old, and Matt, only 12, may race cars that look similar, but their driving styles are not. Kate's pretty mellow and kind of mellow out there on the track. Matt is not. If you go into the corner side by side with Kate, she'll probably give you the spot. Matt will not. Very few times are you gonna beat Matt in the corner. You might, he might not make it out of the corner. Sometimes I get nervous, but like I said, I, I don't know if it helped that I grew up watching it or, that, or if that makes it worse. Not only have the two become more skilled on the track, but they've also gained a lot of knowledge off it. We try to always help our dad work on the cars, and I could change oil, and I guess I've, I've broken so many front ends that I can do that by myself now. <laughs> I've learned so much um, that some of my friends don't know, changing oil, changing tires, and I've taken classes in school, like small engines, just because this has made me interested in all that uh, mechanical stuff. <laughs> But when Kate is not gripping the steering wheel or flying down the front stretch, she's tumbling on the floor or balancing on the beam. She's a member of the Detroit Lakes girls gymnastics team that finished runner up in the Minnesota Class A state meet this past season. It's a really busy summer for me. Um, gymnastics four hours in the morning and then when I'm done with that, get some lunch and go work on the cars a lot of days. It's Gymnastics during the week and racing during the weekend, for sure. I wouldn't be doing it if I didn't like it. Um, and it's giving me really great opportunities and experiences. 
I feel like her personal secretary someday is trying to help her keep up with all of her activities in school and she's very busy, yeah. <laughs> and then she just started working for me this year. She's one of our estimators, so, so she does that in between time too. <laughs> Both of her activities can test your will and also take a lot of discipline and toughness. Just like the strength and like both mentally and physically, you just have to have a lot of strength to um, do your routines and all these skills. But that's also correlated to racing, you know, without power steering, these tracks can get tiring. So gymnastics has helped me in that way. And I see the hard work she puts into it. It's almost a full-time job, or at least a part-time job. It's fun to watch her succeed at everything and try new things. The hours can get long, traveling from track to track and keeping up on maintenance of the cars. But the family loves the quick pace and doesn't look to be slowing down anytime soon. I know we are talking about getting um, into some bigger cars eventually, which would be a great opportunity. Even the 305 class, um, just get into a bigger sprint car. It's going to be interesting to see what Kate does after she graduates next year. Um, Matt, I, I think he's ready. All these professionals, they quit school at about eighth grade and go on the road and I think he'd, he'd do that if he had to. <laughs> the dream was probably be a World of Outlaws. Doesn't look like it's stopping. <laughs> I know Matt is very passionate about it. So yeah, we'll see. I don't, I don't see an end. <laughs>As you know, it is a family affair oftentimes. You, your brother, your parents went through a lot of the same thing, a lot of weekends, a lot of long nights working on the cars, and these youngsters making it happen at a very young age. Yeah, that was that was a very cool uh, clip to see. So that was, that was fun. Brought back a lot, of, a lot of memories from my parents doing the same thing, my brother and I doing the same thing, and that's... That's cool. I, I wish the best for, for that whole family. Yeah, and it's amazing that Matt jumping into one of those cars at age 11, and I said, well, you know, what do you want to do? He goes, well, I, I can't get into the next class until I'm 13, so I have to wait. I mean, he wants, he wants to move up, and if it was up to him, he'd be racing a 410 right now. So you see more <laughs> and more of these young kids make this transition to lightning sprint sooner as we take a look at the two tapes right there. Yeah, it's, uh, it, it's I, I believe it's an insurance thing, you know, not starting too young because it uh, – you know, really anybody can can race a sprint car, but I mean, it takes somebody with, with you know, a, a good head on their shoulders, you yeah. know, to race it for the longevity of it. I mean, you run it once and you could get you know hurt or or, or even worse. So you, you don't want to just put anybody in the car. So that's why they have that age rule, um, you know, just to kind of help, you know, mature a driver, so to speak. Yeah, we should mention too, there is a third sibling named Thomas. And he is still racing go-karts. And he's kind of the next Taves that's coming up. So you never know. We might see three of them in sprint cars here at some point in the future as well. Their father said they're on the road four or five nights a week between all three of the kids racing. So they keep very, very busy yeah. in addition to their jobs and all their, their activities as well. Well, we will step aside here. It's intermission at River City Speedway. It's really turned out to be a beautiful night here at the track. About 75 degrees and sunny and a perfect night to get out and enjoy the fair. We're back in a moment. All the rides, all the food stand, everything is in full swing here at the Grand Forks County Fair. A little bit of work on the track continues here at intermission as we get set for the features. And that includes a fourth bonus feature we didn't necessarily know we were going to have until earlier today. And that is the bus races. There's one bus race. I think there's, what, 12 buses, Chris? Yep, yeah. It, uh, the, the, they'll run all 12 uh, after every everything's done here after the late model feature. They'll, uh, they'll put some of the late model drivers in there, I believe, some street stock drivers, and probably some mini sprint drivers, and then some track workers. So they kind of put everybody in and let them have some fun. They will not be putting in the broadcasters. No, no. Good, don't worry. Probably don't worry. a good thing. It's a good thing. We don't need broadcasters <laughs> driving any of those buses. You know, turning 45-second laps is probably yeah. what it ended up being. Well, you talked about how competitive, Chris, the late model series has gotten not only on the NLRA, but specifically here at River City Speedway. It's been a really tight throughout. We've seen a lot of different drivers kind of move up and down and kind of have their turn, so to speak, of success. And Brody Trofsgruben is one of those guys. He's 24 years old, 
up-and-comer, starting to challenge some of these veterans. And we had a chance to sit down and get to know Brody much better. Story from Taylor Budge. I just love it. I mean, it's it's an awesome feeling. For as long as Brody Trough Grubing can remember, <laughs> summer nights are meant to be spent at the track. It's pretty cool, you know. Uh, I used to be in the stands and watch these guys go around the track, and you know, now being able to race with them and now to compete with them, it's a really good feeling. The 24-year-old Grand Forks native got his start on go karts and has spent the last seven years racing the Wissota Late Model. He's one of the youngest competitors in the region, but Brody is finding success against those he's always looked up to. It is pretty humbling, uh, you know, when these guys uh, have been racing, you know, for as longer than I've been alive in some cases, and just, uh, you know, being able to compete with them, it's very humbling. But Brody isn't only just striving to compete against his role models, he's ready to win. I'm starting to like the speed that we're getting. We still have to get a lot better. I still need some more experience, uh, get better as a driver, and uh, just need to uh, maybe adapt a little bit better out on the track. It's huge for uh, motivation. Um, you know, when you run well, you know, and it inspires you to work hard and to uh, keep on performing, um, you know, even better. Just try and get better each and every night. Yeah, Brody Trough Group and one of those guys, East Grand Forks kind of made his way up. Really, he seems to show up when the biggest show has hit the track, too. He's won, I think, two times when the World of Outlaws has been here in front of the big crowds. And uh, he can muscle that thing around. And the consistency, probably still what he's working on is the biggest thing right now. Yeah, and that's that's the biggest issue, uh, what I see. Um, kid's fast. You know, he, he, he knows his way around the track. Sometimes he, he might go a little too hard. Um, you know, consistency, like you said. And that's just something over time, Chris. You just yep. The more laps you turn, the more you realize what your car can and can't do, where it runs best, and that just takes a lot of different races and a lot more laps on the track. A lot more laps. I mean, I raced for 15 years, and it, it some, some would say it took 15 years for me to figure it out. So, I mean, it's it takes a lot of laps, a lot of time, um, just seat time, just being comfortable, um, knowing who you're racing against. You know, it's, you know, the respect with your fellow competitors and all that. You just want to be... You just want to be more consistent. And it feels like all the classes, they have their ebbs and flows of influx of drivers, you know, and that kind of happens at different periods throughout time and throughout the years. But it feels like the late models right now have the deepest bench, so to speak, or the deepest group of guys that maybe has the most parity in all the other classes we see right now around here. Yeah, there's, with, with the late models, they have a good, solid group. Um, I mean, you could really have 10 different drivers that can win any, any night. Uh, I know John Sang won last week or a week and a half ago or two weeks ago, and he's been racing for two years. So, I mean, there's there's a lot of newer drivers coming in that are competing right away. A lot of veterans like Tom Corcoran have been racing for 54 years. He's winning still. Um, you have your Mike Balkins, the Brad Sangs, and you have uh, Mike Greaseth. You know, I mean, you, there's a lot of different drivers that can win any night out. It's, it's a fun group to watch. Yeah, it certainly has been. It's been a lot of fun to see. That group kind of move around to different tracks throughout the region as well. It's It's been competitive and fun, I think, as a fan. That's all you ever hope for is good action. We saw him going four wide coming out of turn two in one of the heat races. Yeah, and that's, like like I mentioned earlier, the respect you have with your fellow drivers. You know that you can go four wide with them, and they're, they're going to hold their line. They're going to drive you clean going into the next corner. Uh, if you didn't respect your drivers, I mean, you'd be at single file or maybe even double file. So running four wide. I mean, those drivers all respect each other, all know each other, you know, how they're going to drive in the next corner. And that's, it's fun to see as a fan. It's fun to see in the car when you're driving against guys like that. It's, 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 it's exciting. Track-wise, we've seen them kind of put a little more moisture down. They're digging it up just a little bit in certain spots throughout. Has it held up better than you thought it would? Is it a little better than maybe you thought it would be considering what has happened here? It, uh, it, it's it's actually about what I thought. Um, typically the track, unless it's like still raining, the track typically dries out. Um, turn one and two is usually drier than three and four, just the way the sun is. The sun will bake on the track. So they added a little bit of water in one and two. They dug up the bottom. Um, I believe they dug up the top, give a little cushion up there. Then they dug up the very bottom. They left the middle kind of like open. So then that'll be a nice skating rink in the middle. So you'll have a groove on the bottom. You'll have a groove on the top. And hopefully three and four widens out a little bit more. It's, it's uh, I would say three and four is about the middle of the track right now. 
All right. Well, we'll see how it all shakes out here. A street stock feature is coming up here in just a few moments. The buses are taking a few more laps. Give some spectators a look here at the track as well as we take a look at our home of economy drone shot. Boy, beautiful look there at the Grand Forks County Fair, the Ferris wheel, and all the other festivities here tonight. Oh, the sun is out. It's really turned out to be a beautiful night here in Grand Forks. As the buses are taking a couple of more laps, kids are having a wonderful time <laughs> experiencing buzzing around in these buses that will be on the track for our final event of the night. The bus races will round out our coverage of dirt track racing here on Midco Sports. Brian Sean, Chris Shearer, our entire Midco Sports crew, pleased to be with you as we take a look at the Hugo's Family Marketplace starting grid for your street stock feature event. Josh Barker will start on the pole, James Mayhar. On the outside with Tucker Peterson, Weston Ramsrud, John Halverson, and Cole Gressith. And those three guys, those three rows, I should say, Chris, good chance that the winner's going to come out of one of those three rows. Yeah, I would I would agree with that. Uh, I would even go as far as saying row four has got a pretty solid shot as well. Uh, you know, as, as long as the track keeps up, you know, it's it's really anyone's race. Yeah, Braden Brower, he looks really good in his heat race. Royce Jawaski as well. Move forward. Seth Klostrank in row five with Derek Turner in the 10T. And then in row six, we got Trey Hess, Stoney Cruck, Greg Josie, Rodney Hulst, Akira Johansson, Drew Peterson, and Rachel McNamee. And that is your Hugos starting grid here for the Street Stock main event. Lightning sprints will follow. And then 27 late models. Slated to start, there will be no B main. We're just going to put them all out there and see what happens. Yeah, hits 27 cars. Let's uh, let's let her buck. And that creates interest only because lap traffic always plays a factor, especially without cautions. The more you can go, and once lap traffic, as we have seen at this track in the past, with late models comes into play, that changes the whole dynamic of everything. Yeah, typically the lap traffic will be running, you know, the line that the leaders are running. So the leaders have to pick a different line, and you know. It's it's lap traffic is really exciting and it happens really quick at the bull ring here in Grand Forks. And this street stock feature will be 20 laps. The lightning sprints will be 20 laps. And I believe the late models will be 25 laps tonight, I believe. And 20 laps is a lot of time for guys like Trey Hess back in the sixth row, uh, Greg Josie even in the in the seventh row. Um, it was very uncharacteristic for those two cars sitting that far back. They had some issues and, and troubles in their heats. So watch for those two cars, you know, making their way up to up through the field. And and uh, by the end of the race, it wouldn't surprise me if those two guys are in the top five. Looking for the 99 of Josh Barker. I do not see him out there. And there he is. He's, oh, is he slowing down and waiting for the field? Is that the deal? Or is he having problems? Yeah, he was he was parked in turn one. So I don't know if he was waiting for the field to come around or I guess we'll find out here in. Uh, it looks like he was indeed waiting he for was just the rest of the field to catch up. Continue to line up and get ready. 17 cars, 20 laps. As you mentioned, Chris, still enough time to make a move, but if you're back in row five, six, you might need a caution or two to get a little help too. Yeah, it's, you want those timely cautions. You, you almost want lap traffic to slow the leaders down, but at the same time, you want the cautions to kind of bunch everybody back up and and almost start from zero again. Barker will take us to green in the 99. And our street stock feature is underway. Peterson to the inside, trying to make a move. Really good run to start there by Weston Ramsrud. And then he may have gotten in a little contact. 
bounced up on the berm and he dropped back about 10 spots. Two cars still having some issues on the back stretch, and that is the 28 of Greg Josie who pulls in along with the 06 of Drew Peterson. So it looked like we we're going to get through that first lap without any issues, and then on the tail end of the field, we had some cars get into each other. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't see what happened with Greg Josie, but he was, he was slowing up a little bit. Well, Ramsrud had a really good run from his spot going into turns one and two, and then all of a sudden he just kind of lost it. I think did somebody get into him, or did he just lose it on his own? No, yeah, he, he just he lost just, it on his own. Yeah, it looks like he got a little tight there, and the car just kind of turned right. And he he benefited from uh, Greg Josie. Oh yeah, so Greg Josie turned right, hard right. Yeah, it looked like, unfortunately, Drew Peterson was just kind of in the wrong place at the wrong time. The 28 has pulled into the infield and is still sitting down there. And he does not look like he's racing anymore. Something must have broken on that car. Yeah, it, uh, just the way the car veered to the right, I don't know if it was uh, like a fueling issue or or a steering issue. The, I mean, the car took a right-hander, and you know, it, it's when, when when the car's doing that randomly, you just you pull it in, you try to figure it out next week. Not a fun place to watch the race from the infield, and the Dos Ocho will be a spectator here in. The street stock feature event. Yeah, it's it's never it's never fun to watch them from the infield. I can I can promise you that. And again, Josie, he didn't fan it, finish last Friday night here at River City Speedway. It was second way back on June 9th when Trey Hess took the checker here. So a frustrating couple of weeks here for the 28. Line them up, and we'll see if we can get a lap completed. Got a real nice slow parade lap here. And Parker and Meher. And that second row, Ramsroot and Peterson, two guys that know how to get around this place. Green flag is out. Parker into turn one, Peterson follows him. Ramsrud able to hold his line this time. Much better start for the 67. Claw Strike has been able to move forward all the way up to six. He's boxed in by a couple of cars. And now the seven machine of Maher, I think, broke something on the front and unable to steer that car. And the flag, what well, yellow flag will come out once again. Yeah, I'm out right there. You can yeah, the see. Left front looks like it's broke on that car, and he'll be taking it to the pits and calling it a night. Unfortunate for him. Starting on the front row, a chance for a really good finish after a solid heat race. Unfortunately, James from Grand Forks will be taking it back to the pit area. Fortunately, he can still steer that thing well enough, I think, to get it back there. Something. What do you think broke there, Chris? It, it's it's hard to tell. It. I just saw the tail end of that one as well. I was I was looking at the back half of the field, and uh, it, I mean it, it. It very well. It was the left front, so it's. I don't think he hit anybody. It, it, it just could have been a metal fatigue and the spindle just broke. Because he wasn't he wasn't running the bottom, so I don't I don't believe he hit the the berm or anything. Uh, the track is is very smooth, so it's it's not like he hit a, a big hole in the track. It just one of those deals where it just time to, time to fail. Well, he did get one lap in, so 19 to go. Yeah, it just broke. Tried to turn and couldn't turn it. That's a helpless feeling. Yeah, it's uh, it's never fun when you can't turn heading towards the front stretch wall and just try to woe up the car a little bit and get her able to turn just enough. So two cautions, one lap complete. Already three cars back in the pit area. That started this event. 
Barker again will take him to green. Peterson a good start there on Ramsrud. Will dive into turn one into second place. And the G19 of Cole Bresseth right in the mix as well. Royce Jawaski has already been able to maneuver his way up from eighth place up to fifth. Three and four wide. Well, Jawaski looks like a car that is on the move here, Chris. Yeah, Jawaski's looking really good. Tucker Peterson just got um, up into the lead here. He's, he's looking solid. Well, the G19 aggressive already putting the pressure on Barker, looking to take over that second position. The preferred line seems to be the low line right now, Chris. Yeah, it's uh, th th when they worked up the track, they, they dug up the bottom a little bit, so there is a lot more moisture on the bottom. I would say by about halfway through the race, the bottom will start to go away, and you'll see cars move up to the top. Seth Klostrike has been able to move his way up into the top six in that 35 machine. Trey Hess has really not been able to make any significant moves through the field to this point. Five laps gone. Peterson continues to lead by about a half second over Barker. Jawaski continues to run in that third spot. Ramroot trying to get past Gresseth in the G19. Claw strike. Right behind the orange 67. Pretty good race back there for third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. The leaders will come up here on lap traffic and maybe a lap or two. Yeah, the lap cars are running the bottom, so Tucker will have to you know, run up a little higher, or if the lap car you know, moves up the track a little bit, then he'll be able to get around them. Peterson around the 29 of McNamee. Barker drifts really high coming out of turn two. That opens the door for Jawaski, who takes over the second spot. Yeah, Jawaski's on the move. Look at the G19 of Gresseth has been able to move into third place. As Barker had a couple of rough turns, and then Gresseth, he may have got touched in the back there by Barker. The 34JR of Braden Brower has been able to move ahead of Claw Strike into fifth place. Ramsrud has fallen back. John Halverson continues to run in the 35. Trying to make a run. Claw strike up to eighth. Tucker around these last couple lap cars here has got a got a full field ahead of him. Got a lot of room now for Tucker Peterson. He's got a lot of room in the open. Was able to split the two lap cars, and he's been able to really extend this lead out to 1.4 seconds. Nice move by Jawaski to get past the two lappers, and now he'll try to set his sights on the 27P. Gresseth continues to run in third. Still at 1.4 seconds that last time around with five laps to go. Four to go now for Tucker Peterson. He's pretty much led it from the get-go. Barker led the first lap or two, and then Peterson took over. Yeah, Peterson shouldn't have to worry about lap traffic for, I would probably say, the white flag lap. And that shouldn't give uh, Jawaski enough time. Jawaski runs a little bit high into the middle. That's where Gresseth runs as well. And we have a car upside down in turn four. That's Drew, Peterson, Drew Derek, is that Derek Turner or is that Peterson? That is the 06 of Drew Peterson out of Langdon. And Barker also got into that. And there's a dog running free on the track right now. You see that? I, I, do, I do see the dog. <laughs> That's a, I've never seen a dog running down the straightaway before. But that was pretty incredible. So they'll get the car turned back over. Hopefully Drew Peterson, again, out of Langdon, is okay. Got 
got some fuel leaking out of the car there, so hopefully they get the car turned up and over quick. And Derek Turner was just able to escape out of that. Barker as well. You got some fuel and a little bit of fire on the on the front end there. And there's the dog. And looks like Peterson is out of the car. Hopefully everything is okay. Yeah, it's smoking pretty good, Chris. So what do you think is happening there? Well, it, uh, anytime you have the car upside down, you have oil and fuel, you know, <laughs> these cars are designed to be right side up. And <laughs> so the fueling and all the system, every, you know, the air filters are up on top. You have breather tubes. So when they're upside down, they get the breather tube gets full of fuel. So that starts leaking out. Oil gets where it's not supposed to. And when you flip them back over, then it starts, you know, hitting the headers and all of a sudden it just starts smoking. So you really have to worry about fires. You have to worry about fires when it's uh, when you flip the car back over. Peterson might be a little banged up. He was went upside down. That's kind of an awkward position to be in anyway. Yeah, and these these cars are really heavy. Uh, they're not, they're, they don't get upside down all that often. So the drivers, when they do get upside down, they, they're not used to it, and it's it hurts. Oh, good job of the safety crew getting everybody out, everybody taken care of, and right there. I think that was Halverson who got into the side of him, and then boom. Boy, he barrel rolled pretty good there, Chris. Yeah, just a little bit of a racing issue with Halverson and and. Uh, I uh, got into the back of them, and when you do that, then you, you correct the car, and the car turned right. And the left rears dig in. Uh, all these cars, the left rears are, they're really, really soft to get the car to go around the corner. So when the car ends up going right, the left rear digs in, and it almost rolls the car over without even trying. So that's why the, you know, the, the car rolled over a lot easier on the left side than it does on the right side. Well, and Halverson got into the fender, and then trying to drive through was able to tag the 06 again of Peterson and that's what caused him to roll. Yeah. Looks like he's still down there. Got the helmet off. He's standing on his own. He's just talking to the paramedics and the fire crew. Well, the safety crew here does an amazing job as they do at a many, many tracks across the entire country. Had a scary situation here a few weeks ago with Todd Nicholson. Had his car light up on fire with him inside it during hot laps. And Todd facing a really long battle back from some severe burns on his legs and ankles. Has already undergone a couple of surgeries with some grafting, trying to come back from that. And that is the one thing we saw Mark Dobmeyer go through that as well a few months ago as he rebounded from some burns at a race in Arizona. That's one of the scarier situations a, a driver can get in. Yeah, it's, I was, I don't know if you call it fortunate, but I was fortunate to only be in one fire in my, in my career. And it's, it was, I would say 10 seconds for mine. And it feels like an eternity being in that car in, in a fire. Um, and I got out right away. So I, I couldn't imagine, you know, you know, being in a fire like Mark Dobmeyer or or any one of these drivers and it's it's a scary feeling you know it's time time stops and you just kind of sit there and we saw Carson Macedo for the World of Outlaws at Knoxville was was partially knocked out when the car was on fire so he couldn't get out and there were some other drivers and paramedics trying to get him out of there because he was not conscious fortunately for him all the they were able to get the fire out almost immediately with the with the safety crew there in Knoxville and uh, some burns on his hands, but overall nothing too severe. Yeah, he was, I, I wanna say he was on fire. I, I don't remember off the top of my head, but it was like a minute and a half or two and a half minutes. He was like, there was a, a little bit of a fire going on the whole time. So it was, that's a scary situation. You know, the, as a driver being passed out, I mean, you don't really know what's happening, but as fellow competitors that were trying to get him out, that's scary. You know, it's, we're all family around here. We're all, we're all trying to, race, but we all have to go to work tomorrow morning. Well, Drew getting a ride on a four-wheeler back to the pits. Hopefully Drew is okay. Maybe just shook it up a little bit, and right there, the car turns left, then it turns right, and that's where things get dicey. 
And I don't think there was any ill will there with, with John. He's he's raced for years. It's just, uh, it was a racing deal, got into the back end of him. I'm sure he was just, he was tagging him to get him up the track a little bit. And and when the car turned right, he got into him again and, and it upset the car and it tipped the car over. Well, we started with 17 cars. We are down to 12 right now that are still on the track. Tucker Peterson continues to lead with four laps to go. Really good run here for Royce Jawaski, young man out of Adrian, North Dakota. And Cole Gresseth in the G19 as well. And don't forget about Braden Brower. You brought him up, the 34 JR. That's another car that went forward in his heat race and has been able to move all the way from the ninth position up to fourth. Yeah, it should just be a, a, a sprint race to the finish. There, there shouldn't be any uh, lap traffic to contend with with four to go. Peterson will take him to green. That erases a 1.5 second lead that Peterson had. The positive part of that is Tucker won't have to deal with any other lap traffic here the rest of the way. Gresset able to get past Jawaski for second. All the lead cars continue to run that low line. Halverson battling with Ramsrud for fifth. Two laps to go. Does Gresseth have anything for the 27B of Tucker Peterson? As long as Tucker hits his marks, I think he's got her under control here. White flag coming out. One lap to go for Tucker. He's got a sister racing in the feature next, and then his dad is racing in the late model feature after that. So we'll see what Petersons can do. And coming to the Buffalo Wild Wings checker flag, Tucker Peterson gets it done. Back to back here at River City Speedway. Greth has finished second. And Braden Brower coming home third with Jawaski in fourth. First feature is in the books. Tucker Peterson will take it to victory lane when we return. Now, Tucker Peterson has pulled the 27P into victory lane. One here back on June 16th, and now victorious here again this evening. Some pretty good genes, racing genes in that East Grand Forks family. He saw his sister win in the Lightning Sprints division a couple of years ago here on Midco Sports. As Peterson climbs out of the car, and he's fired up. Pretty much led it from wire to wire. And he will head up top. And wave that checkered flag. There he is, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go to Chad Hoff. Back at RailCar.com, video lane, Tucker Peterson. Dude, I know you had some struggles this year, but I love that victory lap. That's amazing. And this car looked awesome. <laughs> yeah, every Polish victory lap's for Grandpa this season. Um, yeah, the car is definitely a handful. It got a little rough coming out of three and four there, but um, just hats off to the track for at least giving us a track to race on. and. Um, all the track prep crew, and I'm sure they did all they could for tonight. So, you know, big thanks to them. Big thanks for all the fans coming out to watch us and Midco for um, uh, streaming this. And, uh, you know, all my all my sponsors, uh, Sean Horn Realty, uh, North Dakota Eye Clinic, Amy Dolan Photography, Hope Church, um, Julie Race Engines, Roxbury Transmissions, uh, Bruce Hart Repair and Fabrication, um, Ad Monkeys, Envision Ag, Hillishog, uh, Olsen Underground, and uh, I think I got them all there. But yeah, and then all you know, <laughs> all my all my crew, my girlfriend Grace, um, just everybody. You know, it's it wouldn't happen without any of these guys, and it's just really cool. It's amazing the following you have along with that just family here, that whole corner right there at the end of the grandstands for you guys. You guys are always sitting right there. I see mom right there. Everybody's sitting there for you. Support is huge in this family. That's got to mean something. Yeah, it definitely does. And, you know, hopefully we can put on the trifecta tonight. All three of us are running tonight. So we'll see if all three Petersons get in victory lane. First Peterson down, the 27P, Tucker Peterson, right out car.com, victory lane. He wins it. Back to you guys. Oh, thanks so much, Chad. Thank you, Tucker. And a lot of pressure now on Kelsey to follow it up here in the Lightning Sprints. Tucker laying down the challenge as we take a look at the Street Stocks results. Cool aggressive, really good run from the G19 here tonight as well, along with Braden Brower. Yeah, it, uh, 
A lot of, like, like I, I figured, you know, a lot of cars moving up through the, through the, the as the race progressed, the, the track starting to widen out a little bit. Uh, didn't get as dry as I figured it would in one and two, but uh, once the mini sprints come out here and, and then the late models, it should be a very, very racy track by the end of the night. Cole Gressa, Braden Brower, Royce Jawaski had his moments as well, was all the way up to second, ended up falling back to fourth, and then John Halverson of Warren, Minnesota, is your top five. Lightning sprints are lining up and staging, and they do a little bit of packing here after the street stock feature. We'll back with our second feature of the night when we return to River City Speedway. One feature in the books, two more remain. Lightning Sprint's coming up next. 20 laps, 18 scheduled to start, but we may not see all 18. We saw a couple of cars, unfortunately, blow up engines in their heat races, so we'll see how that changes things. But on your front row, Jason Berg in the 100, Brad Bjorke in the 11B, Dexter Bergston, who checked out in his heat race and won it by two and a half seconds with Dylan Langevin on his outside. Matt Taves ended up winning his heat race and a very unfortunate situation with Weston Olsen, who was leading going into the final turns and then blew up his motor and was just able to finish. But again, we don't expect to see him coming in. So he will have Alex Truszynski, another dominant force on the outside of row three. Mark Williams, Kelsey Peterson in row four. Kate Taves and Sean Enright will be in row number five. Scheduled to start in row six, Evan Janish out of Cavalier and Alan Truszynski. And again, we saw Alan pull off in his heat race as well. Not sure if we'll see him here. We do not anticipate we'll see Weston Olsen in the 27 after his motor issue. Gerald Haddlestead, Evan Hussain, Wesley Van Druden in another car that I believe had some issues with a motor. Loki Bjorki and Brody Graham. And we, some of these cars, I'm not even sure if we've seen them at all. So we don't think we'll have 18 out here. Looks like we have 17 though, don't we? 16? 17 it looks like. Truszynski is back out. Alan Truszynski. And it does look like Van Drunen is back out there as well. It's another car that came off the pace and drew a caution flag. So the only car we don't see is the 27 of Weston Olsen. And he by far had the most damage done in his motor with his issue yeah he uh he scattered parts from his engine from back stretch to the front stretch so he uh you know i, I i'm not sure how hard it is to to replace engines if these cars even have you know you know the capabilities of, of changing out a spare engine in in between the heat and the feature so yeah it was very unfortunate he would have been a car to watch to you know to contend for the win tonight but it opens the door for for uh about 10, 10, 11 other cars, so. A lot of good cars on your Hugo starting grid. Kelsey's got a way to, ways to go to uh, to hopefully get the Peterson name in victory lane tonight. Kuzinski, Berg, Bergson, it's gonna be tough doing there for the 93 as the green flag is out. Alan Kuzinski got really high along with Sean Enright and they both dropped back quite a bit. Jason Berg leads lap number one, followed by Dylan Langevin. Alex Truszynski making his way up the field. Matt Taves runs sixth. Truszynski sticking to that high line, looking for fourth. Dexter Bergston battling in there. Brad Bjorke still running third. Berg chased by Langevin. They're one and two, and there's a gap. Bjorke third. Kate Taves has moved up to seventh. Just got done making a pass of the 1W of Mark Williams. And lap traffic now starting to become a factor. Berg has caught the 18 of Emmett Hussain. Berg continues to lead, but Langevin has a beat on him. Going around a couple of other lap cars. Matt Taves trying to catch Truszynski. Again, lap cars on the bottom of the track. 
as Berg continues to hold off Langevin, but that has been a good race, and Berg drops up. He dripped up to high coming out of turn two, and that opened the door for Dylan Langevin out of three for River, Minnesota. He's the new leader with 12 laps to go. That mistake for Berg also allowed Bergston to close the gap on the leaders a little bit. Berg got a little bit loose coming out of turn two, and now Bergston trying to make a run at him. Kruzinski continues to run in fifth. Brad Bjerke in fourth. Here comes Matt Taves. Oh, Bjerke got out of whack, and Bjerke almost lost it, but he lost a couple of positions there in the front stretch. Taves moves ahead. Kate Taves also makes the run. Kelsey Peterson passed Bjerke. Langevin continues to lead, but Bergson has him in his sights. The lead down to eight tenths of a second. Seven laps to go for Langevin. Lap car in front of Langevin will try to move past the eight of what Van Drunen and able to do so. Bergson now right on the heels of the four machine. Five laps to go this time around for the leaders. Oh no, the four car got spun around and tagged by Bergson. And Bergson has grabbed the lead and Berg now runs third. The four got a little bit loose there, Chris, coming out of four, and then they got together. Yeah, he was running the bottom, just missed the cushion coming out of, out, out of four, and Dexter had the run and tagged him, and the rest is history. Well, Bergson maneuvering around other lap cars, and he will lead with three laps to go. Langevin able to recover, did a nice job of recovering, still to run second. Berg in third, Druszynski in fourth, Matt Taves in fifth. Looks like the 40 car of Evan Janish is pulling off. Kelsey Peterson running sixth. Truszynski with the white flag. Dexter Bergson just a couple of turns away from picking up yet another victory. And Bergson will take the checkered flag, followed by the four machine of Langevin. Berg coming home third, Truszynski in fourth, and Matt Taves will round out your top five. Kelsey Peterson sixth, Brad Bjerke seventh, Kate Taves eighth, Williams ninth, and Alan Truszynski finishing in tenth. Dexter Bergston started in the back but had no issue, and Langevin not happy about it. Dexter Bergson, his fifth win in the month of June alone. We'll send it down to Chad Hoff. Number five in a row. And I told Amanda, I said, if he gets it again, I'm getting water. I got him water. Dude, I know it's a rough track. I know that. But you got to be a real big wheel man to get in here. And you wheeled that car to a victory lane, number five in a row. Yeah, first off, I got I to gotta apologize to number four. Number four, uh, Dylan Langevin there, uh, out of four here. Uh, he got a little sideways, and I got hooked up, and I, I hit him in the rear, so I got to apologize for that, number one. But, uh, yeah, no, track was good. Um, I got out here, and I thought I was going to be too tight. but uh, And it kind of was, but we managed it, and it, uh, it worked out. You know, you, first and foremost, you come out here, first thing you say is you apologize, so you own it. I mean, that's a respectful driver right there. But this class is just so competitive right now. It is, uh, especially when Trashinsky's here and you know, Dylan's an up-and-comer. Uh, I don't know if I stole his first win there, but um, I guess racing's racing, but I, I apologize. Hey, man, you're good shit. I tell you, let's look at some awesome sponsors on this machine here for us. Uh, Bennett Construction, uh, Todd's Electric, uh, RCCA Co-op, Storm Insurance, One Better Liquor, Napa, uh, Premier Egg, uh, Spina, Spina Custom Egg Services, uh, Johnson Bait and Repair, uh, RC, RC, I already said that one. <laughs> Skag Longmores. Yeah, Skag Longmores, um, CNM Ford, Rosa County Ford, 
uh, back with services, and uh, and uh, I think that's about it. Tell you what, that is the fifth in a row, ladies and gentlemen. The other machine's back in Victor Lane's Dexter Divert skin. Back to you guys. All right, thanks much, Chad. Congratulations to Dexter, who's really rolling here in the month of June. No matter what track he goes to, no matter when it is, continues to run. Apologize to J Dylan Langevin, who, again, got a little bit loose coming out of four. Chris, that's, that is one of those racing deals. That's not something that he necessarily tried to do. It was it just kind of happened. Yeah, I don't think Dexter is one of those type of drivers either. He uh, first thing he said, you know, he apologized. But I, I watched the, I watched Dylan come out of four, and he just he got a little loose and. Wheels spun, Dexter's right on his tail, and you know, got into the back of him, lifted right away, and it just it happened to turn Dylan, and it, it is what it is. And Langevin only ended up finishing back a half second, really been a nice recovery after almost spinning out completely there as Langevin comes home second. Jason Berg started on the front row, finishes third. Alex Truszynski talked about him and uh, how tough he is to be coming home fourth. And Matthew Taves, the young 12-year-old out of Detroit Lakes, finishes fifth. Yeah, but, uh, the, the younger younger generation drivers, they don't have any fear. It, uh, they just, all they want to do is go fast. And, and uh, he, he proved he can he can drive, and he, he's uh, going to be a wheelman you know, in years to come. Yeah, and his sister Kate finishing eighth, so the younger sibling has the bragging rights in the Taves household to stay bed back to Detroit Lakes. Coming up tonight. A little bit of a bump and run. Dexter Bergson, another victory. Got into the back of Langevin. Just a little bit, and that was the door that was opened for him to come home with a checkered flag. Here's your Hugo's Family Marketplace starting grid for our NLRA late models. Ryan Corbett in the C4 will be on the front row with the one TPO of Tyler Peterson. Dustin Strand in row two. That'll be an interesting uh, battle to watch between the 1 TPO and 71. We'll get into that in a couple of moments. Greg Moore in the 14M, Cole Schill in the 44 star, along with Shane Eddington. Mike Grissom, your two-time defending NLRA champion with Rusty Coleman on the outside of him in row four. Jason Strand in the E85 with the veteran T1 Tom Corcoran. Row six is another veteran, Brad Singh in the 12S, followed by Mitch Johnson in the double zero out of Hickson. Brandon Fuller out of Grand Forks. Jeff Hopple out of West Fargo make up row seven. The 7P of Joey Peterson out of East Grand Forks has John Seng in the 21S outside of him. Lance Schill in row nine with Brody Trotgruben in the 14. In row trend and the Winnipeg native, Mike Balkin with Eric Haugland. The 33 of Ryan Dahl out of West Fargo and the double zero C of Brandon Corbett will start in row 11. Jesse Tunis and Terry Nelson in row 12. Steve Anderson, Nicholas Minsky in row 13. And Lane Schreer will be your 27th starter here tonight. Steve Anderson, we want to send our well wishes out to the Anderson family too. It's a very scary situation. Happened not that long ago. Yeah, Blake uh, ended up getting into a pretty terrible accident in Devil's Lake Speedway. And uh, I don't want to say too much, but he was, uh, he, he got injured and uh, our hearts are, are out to him. Well wishes. He's he'll he'll be back. He, he will be back, and and uh, you know that's just that's the dangers of these race cars. That's anything can happen to any any driver. Here's a look at Shane Eddington in the 5E. Another guy that missed some time was not able to get across the border back here to River City Speedway. Really started coming into 2019. And then in 2020 with COVID, missed a bunch of time, even 2021. And finally, these guys from Canada are able to come back down to race again. Yeah, we, we got back to normal here in 2022 and 2023. So it's they, they had a couple years off. So all the, the American drivers got a couple more laps than the Canadian drivers. We're set to take the green this time by Corbett. And the one TPO Peterson takes us to green. Corbett leads him going into turn one, four, and even five wide potentially coming out of turn two. Good start. For Cole Schill as well in the 44 star, Strand and Tyler Peterson. That's going to be a battle to watch. They've had a history here the last couple of weeks. Yeah, last couple of weeks on last Friday and this Thursday, they've uh, those two have gotten together, so it'll be interesting to see how they race against each other tonight. And Terry Nelson in the 54 has pulled that machine off. 
Corbett getting out of the groove and making contact there with Cole Schill as they battle for third and fourth. And Gresset already up to fifth place with Eddington right on his heels. Peterson continues to lead. Strand trying to reel him in. Lap traffic almost in play here, and we're only about four laps into this thing. Yeah, the, the preferred line right now is around the bottom. Uh, everyone's kind of running the bottom, so it'll be a little bit of a rigmarole trying to get around the outside of the, the lap cars here. Peterson goes high, opening the door for Strand. Strand sticks it low. And side by side, as Strand continues to go down low line, Peterson high. And Strand grabs the lead coming out of turn number two momentarily. Brandon Corbett kind of got in the way a little bit there. And now we have a yellow flag as the F9 of Brandon Fuller got spin out right near Victory Lane. First caution flag with six laps gone. Yeah, it was a slow spin, so I don't know if he got if he got turned or if something broke in the left front. It uh, well, it looks like he's backing away now, so must have just lost it and spun out. Peterson and Strand had really pulled away from the rest of the field. Peterson and Strand only separated by a half a second. Oh, and Fuller not happy with somebody with over there. Lance Schill. Oh, it's Lance Schill that must have. Gotten into the F9 a little bit there. Those two battling for a position. Yeah, you can see a little damage on the right rear of Lance Shields' vehicle. Ryan Corbett continues to run third. Gresseth fourth. Cole Schill fifth. Shane Eddington sixth. Followed by Greg Moore, Brad Sang, and the ED5 of Jason Strand. Saw Strand and Tyler Peterson going at it. And these two have been going at it quite a bit here <laughs> the last couple of weeks. Now, it, I, I think if it was uh, closer to about five to go or a couple laps to go, that would have been a little, little less clean unless they buried the hatchet between the two and and decide to, to start racing a little cleaner with each other. But it'll be it'll be very interesting to say the least to see the next. 19 laps here with these two drivers. Well, Tyler Peterson out of Hickson in his first year in a late model, he has six late model wins at five different tracks. And this is a two-time Wissota modified national champion, had a lot of success, won $2,000 in McLean County a couple of weeks ago. His second time in the seat, he won in a late model. He's really made the transition look seamless. Yeah, he's uh, he's one of those drivers, yeah, he can jump in any car and be competitive in anything he runs in. Same with Strand, you know, Strand's got 100 feature wins and, you know, multiple different different cars, so it's two two very good wheelmen. Gresset hugs the bottom trying to get around Corbett as we go green again. Shill to the outside. Corbett kind of got stuck in no man's land, and he's passed by a couple of different cars. Gresset now moving into third place, and we have another caution. Nicholas Minsky out in turn two got sideways. Was that Lane Schwer that yeah, got into I, Minsky? Yeah, I believe Lane got in the back of Minsky and then turned sideways. All bunched up. And that was good for Corbett. Corbett looked really tight the first couple of turns on that restart. Right there. See Minsky. Battling for that same piece of real estate as Schwer was, and good thing for Minsky is he doesn't lose much position. Yeah, he does, <laughs> does, doesn't lose a lot of positions. He, uh, you know, didn't really get tagged too terribly hard, so a car looks decent. So we've lined them up, and next time around. Green flag will once again be out. Lance Schill lined up next to Joey Peterson. Those two are running in the 14th and 15th spots respectively. So a lot of time to go here, 19 laps. Back to green. Really good start for Strand, much better start for Corbett this time as Gresseth 
Tries to get to the outside and Strand collides with a bunch of different cards. Sega's involved, Eddington, a whole chain reaction. As Strand got a little bit loose, started spinning, coming out of turn two. And this has created all sorts of issues and a big mess. Yeah, there must have been an issue. Strand uh, kind of stumbled coming out of the corner and, you know, just kind of piled everybody up with him. 71 got off to a good start, went to the inside, Peterson out clean, and then right like, here. It just, the car just kind of died and nowhere to go. And Started with Corbett and then Gresseth had nowhere to go, and then Eddington had nowhere to go. Brad Sang spins, Mitch Johnson spins there, Lant Lance Schild, I see. Now, John Sang. Yeah, even Lance, yeah, Lance Schild, you talked about it. John Sang in that mess. And now the question is how much damage is done to these cars in that melee. That's what's going to be determined here. Sang didn't look like, Brad Sang didn't look like he got into it too bad. Eddington certainly got some damage to his right rear end area. Oh. Here's Schill, a couple of banged up pieces of sheet metal on the 17S. Yeah, it looks like most uh, most everybody drove away except for Dustin Strand. And Strand is getting pushed, so something definitely broke on that car. It died and then it didn't look like it was even turning. Just kind of got there and just kind of stopped. Yeah, he's uh, he's frantically waving the the, the push guy. On the last thing Strand wants is to have to take a DNF in this situation. Yeah, he's he's probably going to try to hurry up, get to the pits, and and see if his crew guys can, you know, assess the situation. Maybe Strand knows what broke and it's an easy fix. And this is a guy that does a lot of work on cars, a lot of race cars. <laughs> he's he's busy. Yeah, he uh. He, he's yeah, he's one of those owner drivers and, and pit guys and crew chiefs and he kind of does it all. Well, you and I a few years ago had a chance to go to his shop and kind of talk shop with him a little bit. He also drives a modified has won a ton of races in a modified as well often does double duty when they're both racing the same night. Lance Schill does the same thing. Tyler Peterson will do the same thing. And they will get Strand back to the pit area to see if they can't figure out what's going on with the 71. Still looking at Eddington's vehicle. I don't know if a piece of the steering column or something else has broken off there. Yeah, typically the track crew, they, they can't work on the car, um, but if it's a safety issue, then they're allowed to like bend the bar back, you know, just make the car safe again. So maybe he, he was turning and the car just, it didn't turn. No, he's, uh, he's not happy with something. And looks like Eddington has the wheel off and he's done. Tough break for the 5E out of Manitoba. Second at Norman County on Thursday was Eddington. Did not finish at I-94 on Friday. Take another look. Yeah, pretty hard initial hit there between uh, Strand and Edgington and So now we'll try to get them all lined up again and figure out what position everybody's in and that's the tricky part too, right Chris trying to figure out where everybody will be in the lineup now. Yeah, it's uh so I'm I'm not sure how the how they would score that depending on you know, if the car stops, I know in, in the sprint car world, if, if you stop under caution, you just you go to the back and you line up depending on where you were, you know, the lap before. So the car that stopped ahead of you and you stop behind him, then you would start behind that car. So, I mean, if we had eight or nine cars stopped, I mean, you could be, you know, back up. Well, I see uh, Brad Sang sitting in fifth right now, so they must get their spot back. Yeah, because Sang was one of those cars that stopped, but again, everything in front of him had kind of happened already. Yep. 
John Singh looks like he's ready to rejoin the field. There's Strand. So he, he took off. So that car is at least moving now. So he may be able to rejoin the field here, Chris. Yeah. So he, it, it could have been as easy as something, you know, the car came out of gear, so he's just going to put the car in, in drive gear, race gear. Uh, it could have been an ignition, something ignition wise. So they swapped out the ignition box. Whatever it was, he knew, he must have knew what it was. And now he's uh, back up, and he'll be one to watch move up through the field here, see if he can salvage a, a decent run tonight. Oh, great look at the field here on our home of economy drone cam. Beautiful look here at River City Speedway, the bull ring. Action packed from lap to lap. You're never quite sure what's going to happen. As Strand will rejoin the field, but he will do so at the back of the pack. So the 71 will have some work to do in the next 19 laps. Next time around, the green flag will drop. Twenty-one cars remain, and look at Strand <laughs> got on the gas and passed three cars in the first turn. Brad Sang up to fourth. Good drive there around the 14 of Greg Moore. And another yellow flag, and this time it's the double zeros having an issue. That's Mitch Johnson out yeah, of Hickson. And Nick Minsky uh, ended up looping it because of uh, Johnson. Oh, Johnson's wheel broke. Right rear wheel broke. Let's take a look at the zero zeros here. And yeah, just something broke there on the. Yeah, look at that right wheel just yeah so the that the wheel broke from the hub it very well could have happened or could have cracked it under under that last caution and then when he went to the corner it stressed it enough where it, it just snapped that not kind of negates uh strand's good start he had passed you know Three cars before the before the race. Uh, I wouldn't say before the race started. It was a very well timed start. <laughs> well, and again, we did not complete a lap, so Strand should be moved to the back of the pack again. Nineteen cars remain. We started with twenty-seven late models, and eight are already out of the race. Brad Sang had a really good start. Had moved past the fourteen M of Greg Moore into fourth place. But the one TPO was out in front of everybody by at least four or five car lengths. Yeah, and the, you know, looking at the points picture with Shane Edgington, you know, out of the race now, I'm sure that's why Strand wanted to get pushed to the pits and get back just to get, you know, the well needed points, you know, to get himself a little further ahead in the in the points race. Well, and, and Gresseth's not out there. That's the other car that was moved back to the pits and had damage. So Gresset, the points leader, is also out of the race, and that's another really competitive car that big, is done for the night. Big point swing. And they're working feverishly on the 16S of Jeff Hoppola, trying to get a wheel on that car in the pits. Apple is going to try to rejoin the field. I think he's going to be able to do it. Good job getting work done there on the 16 S. Yeah, I don't uh, I don't see too much quick movement over in the Mitch Johnson pit area. Probably too much work to be done to fix the double zero machine out of Hickson. And there's Gresseth in the 17 right there. And he's parked it for the night back at the hauler. They're going to take the green, so Hoppel has got to hurry up and get back to the tail of the field. Green flag is out. Hoppel a half lap behind the rest of the field. Good start again. Sang passed more into fourth. 
Here comes Rusty Coleman to the high side. Try and maneuver around some other cars. The 85 of Strand battling Schill in the back of the pack. And Joey Peterson at the top as well as they go three wide. Trot Grubin also in to that battle along with Mike Bulkin. Dustin Strand right now is a man on a mission. Just going to the top, letting, uh, letting her eat. Yeah, Bulkin has already passed eight cars. And now trying to maneuver around Bulkin on the top, following Joey Peterson in a row into turn number three. Around Bulkin and now trying to maneuver around Trot Grubin. Peterson goes to the low side this time, Joey Peterson. Tyler Peterson in the one TPO has checked out a 2.6 second lead on the last lap and it might be bigger this time around. Ryan Corbett still in second, Cole Schill in third. 2.8 seconds the interval between first and second. On that last lap, 13 to go. Boy, that one TPO is locked in, Chris. Yeah, he's uh, he, he had a clean track in front of him, so it'll be interesting to see how he maneuvers in the lap traffic here. Oh, boy, Nicholas Minsky got lifted off the ground by the double zeros, and a flag flies. I think it was Corbett that got together with Minsky, and he went up in the air, and that brought out the yellow. And also the 21 of Seng is stopped on the banking. Looks like out there in Cole, turn three area. Well, Cole Shield just uh, pulled out off the track as well. And Cole Shield was running third with Ryan Corbett in the C4, so it's really become a battle of attrition. 13 laps to go. There's a look at Seng's vehicle. The 5E of Shane Eddington. And there's a look at Seng. John Sang in the 21S. Let's take a look. There goes Strand really high. And then Sang got together. That looked like it was with Steve Anderson. And then they got bouncing off the cushion and over the banking. Yeah, he had his helmet off, so I don't know if he broke something on the left front or if, he, uh, if he's calling it a day. Trying to get something just to push that car. Doesn't look like you can get it moving. Oh. Car's probably stuck in gear, and uh, you, car needs to go forward to get it out of gear. And Nicholas Minsky has pulled his car back to the hauler as well. Well, Strand is back up into the top seven. There's 16 cars still on the track. There goes Steve Anderson. I think he's going to pull that machine off out of Amarato. See if John Sen can regain the field, but boy, Tyler Peterson, the one TPO, has been on a different level than everybody else. Ryan Corbett's been able to hang on to that second spot, and again with Cole Schill pulling off, that moves Brad Seng into third. Yeah, Brad. Brad typically likes a little bit drier track, but he's uh, he's always one to contend. He always sets his car up for the the last five laps. So he's uh, he always kind of puts himself into position and in the last couple laps he'll uh, he'll turn on the jets and the one I'm watching right now is a 71 of Dustin Strand he uh, had to restart in the back and you know sitting up in seventh place right here. Well, we talked about Strand and all the success he has had won his 100th race overall last week three wins this season two in a modified. He's a four-time NLRA champion. The last championship coming back in 2020. Currently second in the point standings this year. You know, Brad saying a guy that is just steady Eddie too. Another guy that won on Friday night at I-94 Speedway in Fergus Falls. Second victory there this month. He's been running really good. Another three-time NLRA champion. His last championship with the circuit coming back in 2019. And that was really before Grethsa started to take over. 
Yeah, he's uh, he, he's another one of those names that have, has been around for years. Uh, you know, the saying name has been you know synonymous with with winning and and you know being up front, whether it was a uh, street stock or a super stock, and uh, then now all the way up into the the late model division. So Sang, they're able to get that car, John Sang, back into gear, and it looks like he might be okay to rejoin the field. There's a look at the current point standings. Cole Schill, again, that is a tough break for the 44 star. And Schill, he won a race here back on June 9th. His father, Howie, was an original racer and a late model here many, many years ago, passed away a couple of years ago around Christmas time, and it was kind of an emotional win for Cole. First time he had won since his dad passed. There's the E85. We talked about Strand. Another guy, you know, he had talked about we just can't quite get the car right. You know, when he's when it's been running good, it's been fast, but he's had various issues, been fighting the car, did not race at Norman County on Thursday. Another guy that raced modifieds for years, moved up to the late model division, won his first race here at River City's last July, and he's in the top five right now. Get him back into position and line him up with 13 laps to go. You can see the track starting to shine off a little bit from the sun. That's uh, the track's really drying out, and it'll get a lot more racy here the last 13 laps to go. We started with 27 late miles. We're down to 16. And that guy has been the one to beat right there. Tyler Peterson will take him to green once again. Great start for Singh. Boy, Corbett really slipped. To the high side is Strand barrels his way into turns one and two. And that got more in trouble and more pulls it into the infield. And that'll bring out the yellow. Strand just barreled his way into turns one and two without any regard at all and added up to fifth place. Watch the 71. Something there broke on the 14M of Greg Moore. Yeah, it almost looked like Greg's car stumbled on the start, so either he spun his wheels or something. Uh, everyone kind of took off around him. You feel bad for a guy like Moore. It was one really well. Go back five years. He was starting when he was only 14 years old. Jumped into a bomber out of Jamestown just to get into racing. Said his big dream was to get into a late model. And five years later at 19, here he is. So Moore will head to the back of the pack. Did not complete a lap. Strand will start on the inside of that fourth row with Lance Schill right next to him. Sang to the inside, trying to grab second place from Corbett, who hangs onto that low line, and the two are side by side, heading into turn three. Sang past Corbett. Here comes Strand looking for third. Coleman high. Lance Schill low. Here comes Strand. Schill gets sideways. Car gets tight. He's able to hang on to it coming out of turn four. Yeah, he, he got a little. A little loose on the bottom of uh, three and four and allowed a couple of the other guys to get around him. Schill has moved his way into fifth place. Coleman has really drifted up high now and lost a couple of spots as Mike Balkin is getting into the action in that 10 machine. Strand able to hang on to it on the high side and make the pass of Coleman. He's up to sixth. Yeah, it seems like the fast way is still around the bottom. Strand will sail it around the top again, trying to catch up to Lance Schill. That time, the 71 got gained some momentum, Chris. Yeah, it's uh, I, Strand is really the only one that's making the top work right now. Everyone else is rolling the bottom. There's your battle for fifth. Strand continues to run in fourth.
Tyler Peterson continues to show the way. A 1.5 second lead over Brad Strand or Brad Seng, excuse me. Corbett still continues to run third. This time around, six laps to go. Lap traffic now an issue as Peterson passes Lane Schwer. Seng trying to stay within striking distance with five to go. Yeah, these next couple laps will be very pivotal for uh, for TPO. Strand has been able to battle his way back into the fifth spot, making the pass of Schill, and now has his sight set on Strand and Corbin. Sang just not able to gain much ground, but now Peterson out of the groove, and he's going to trim a lot off the lead down to a six tenths of a second but a lap car in front of Sang as Corbett got loose in front of him and he'll pull to the infield. Tyler Peterson's car is looking like it's getting a lot tighter as the race goes on here. Two laps to go Sang has a shot. Two separated by just six tenths of a second last time around. Strand still hanging on to third Corbett fourth Strand fifth Dustin Strand. White flag is out. Checker will wave next time by, and we have a caution. That is Greg Moore in the 14M, as the white flag was set to wave, and we're not done yet. It'll be a fun uh, two-lap shootout to see who is uh, crowned tonight's feature winner. Brody Trofgruben has been able to maneuver his way up to eighth place. Yeah, Moore just put it up on the top, missed the cushion a little bit, got her sideways, and luckily it was it was on the top, and everyone else was running the bottom, so everyone got by without uh, without any damage, and we can all race another day. And Brad saying without the luxury of having lap traffic maybe to help contend for the victory as you see the 14 M of Greg Moore. So I've been watching Tyler Peterson in uh, turns three and four and his car has been getting progressively tighter and tighter. So I can see Brad you know waiting until turn three and four and, and diving to the bottom and maybe getting stealing a win here from him. In that row behind Peterson, you have Seng and then Strand behind him, Ryan Corbett and Dustin Strand. Yeah, Dustin Strand up on the top. That's uh, his preferred position, so that'll be a fun, or fun, uh, fun corner to watch in one and two here. And if everybody else goes low and Dustin goes high, you never know. You never know. Green, green, white checker coming up. Good turn there for Peterson. Smooth through one and two. Balkan has been able to make his way past Strand up to fifth place. White flag is out. One more set of turns left for Tyler Peterson. And the seventh win in a late model for Tyler Peterson. Brad sang second. Jason Strand comes home third. How about Mike Balkin all the way up to fourth place, making a last lap pass of Ryan Corbett. Dustin Strand finishes sixth, and Rusty Coleman comes home in seventh. The one TPO has had it rolling here in the month of June. Seventh victory at five different tracks already this season. Tyler Peterson pretty much lead from leads from wire to wire and he is standing by with Chad off down near victory lane. Yes, sir. Tyler Peterson checking out some stuff. You know, we got a little bending to do and stuff. Overall, not a bad time. You know, it must be a fair thing. You know, you won an Ada. You come here and you win here tonight. It's a fair night. But man, you're still the king of the bullring in any vehicle you drive, dude. Talk about that feature race tonight. 
Oh, it was uh, it was pretty good. They had a lot of rain, so the track held up pretty well for what they had. Uh, fair races are awesome. We get a bunch of new fans, new faces come out to the races. So I hope to see you guys back here. Uh, awesome turnout. Uh, I love River City Speedway. I tell you, when you come here, it, you know there's a presence when you come, and this one TPO is in the pits because everybody looks like, oh, man, he's here. That's got to feel pretty good for you and uh, also the performance that you do every time you come out here. I don't know about that. I just go out there and try to do the best I can. Uh, I want to give a shout-out to my uh, grandma and grandpa down in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. They're watching uh, on Midco. So I love you guys. Thanks for tuning in. I think my mom's watching at home. Uh, my little puppy, Piper, she's three for three at the races now. Uh, my beautiful wife, my dad, uh, he's not up here, but uh, he gave us a hot rod again. Uh, Enclave, uh, Putter Crow Specialist, All Fab Rillings and Metal Works, Quick Lift by TP Fabricating. The whole crew at Rocket Chassis, man, this thing has been lights out. Uh, Kurt, Zach, Axlin, the whole squad at Mark are at uh, Rocket. Uh, can't say enough, so I'm um, looking forward to the rest of the year here and coming with the mod and everything, so it's, it's been good to us. Been good. Hey, next week, late models, you bringing this bad boy for us for the World of Outlaws? Oh, man, I'm about 300 horsepower short drone. We're probably going to come, but, uh, I mean, we, we ain't going to be competing with them, so we'll see what we can do, but we'll probably be here. There he is, ladies and gentlemen, the one TPO. That's Tyler Peterson. Hey, why not make a run at it, man? The one TPO has a run, and I don't care what kind of horsepower you get. So we take a look at the late model results. Tyler Peterson wins it by 1.6 seconds over Brad Seng after a late caution. Jason Strand of the 85, another solid run for him. Mike Bulkin from eighth to fourth in the last two laps finishes fourth, and Ryan Corbett able to hang on for fifth. Yeah, Bulkin had that bottom groove running uh, or working well the last couple laps. He just, uh, as everybody was drifting up, coming out, he would uh, he would keep it on the bottom and and uh, drag race him down the back stretch and the front stretch, and he had the he had the bottom groove rolling. Tyler Peterson making that transition from modifieds to late models look very seamless. Picks up yet another victory. And the two-time Wasota national champion has another trophy and another check to celebrate a victory here in Grand Forks. Well, you see the buses have lined up for our final, final event of the night. This was not something that was originally on the schedule, but because of the rain out yesterday, the bus races are moved to tonight, and it gives us a chance to see something that we have not seen a lot of. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's kind of a, a staple for the fair week. Uh, like we mentioned earlier, that the, the kids love it. The fans love it. You know, the adults, they uh, they all seem to love it. So they, they keep bringing the buses out for a one one race a year deal and uh, we'll uh, we'll get to see them running and typically they'll put on a show where they'll run side by side or three wide and and they, they, they put on a, a, a pretty fun little show. I remember one time Mark Dobmeyer got selected or picked to race one of these and then he requested to bring it back to a shop and do some work on it. He wanted to soup it up a little bit and they finally had to say look. Yeah. <laughs> We're, we're not going to get into this whole thing. <laughs> we're going to soup up the the buses. But here they are. <laughs> Looks couple, like nine of them. Yeah, I know I know a couple of the track crew guys, they uh they would tell me, you know, hey, if you ever get if you ever get picked, make sure you jump in this bus. So they're uh they know which ones are are the fast ones or which ones you know to steer clear of. So I can't tell necessarily who is who, but I know in the 14 is Craig Hauser. Keegan Hauser is in the 25. So that's his son. Yep. Wes Rosinski is in the number three that you just saw go by with all the smiley faces on back. The John Deere bus, I believe that's Keegan. That's, yep. that's Keegan in that one. Yeah, okay. So Wes, Wes is one of the old track guys, so he uh, he would always pick the good bus. So <laughs> Marty Clava is in number one. That is the, the Ricky Bobby Wonderbread bus I believe on your front row is James is it Ruge and Cody Harris I think of the 99 and 2 and then it's Mike Mike Mascheski Mascheski and the five and Justin is it London I believe we and here's why we're struggling a little bit with it it was this is handwritten notes and it's yeah it has been texted to us and we're not exactly sure so what these is what. uh these names i know mike Mascheski, he's uh he's a fire crew guy um craig hauser is uh we, we call him doogie hauser he's uh he's a long time track worker um <laughs> you know he's he's helped out for years ever since i can remember racing uh keegan hauser's is his son 
the, uh, what? the seven a eh, the, Can the Canadian bus is Janice Kennedy. OK. <laughs> so there we go. We got uh, we, we got some fun happening here shortly. The seven a eh? yeah, seven a. Eh. <laughs> And the green flag is out. And they are Look under at them green. go. <laughs> they are flying. Doogie Hauser's making his way up the field. How about the 25-2 of Keegan Hauser? Found that low groove is following Marty Clava in the one. Who's going to lead lap one here? Is it the 99? James Ruge? Oh, one car's got the, got the run on the bottom. Oh, we look at three wide going into turn three. Something's got to give here, Chris. Oh, look at the slide job. Yeah, we got a slide <laughs> we job. We got a slide job in a bus. <laughs> Unbelievable. Mike Mascheski led that lap, and now the one. Oh, we got a caution. Oh, we got a caution. What happened? Oh, no. Technical issue. Oh, we got the a 124 flat. shredded a right front. Yep. Well, with the speeds, I mean, these buses are turning. You you kind of expect it. You that's, know, it's that's just in London, unfortunately, in the Thunder 124 that shredded a right front tire. So I think that might be the end the end of his night. Oh, look at that. Oh, they're getting into each other a little bit. Oh, there it is. Whoop. Yep. That's not, that's not great. Well, the one thing I never thought I'd see in my life on a dirt track is a slide job from a bus. But that has officially happened here tonight. He doesn't want to give up, but the, you need a tire. I mean, are they going to let him race with that thing? Jeepers, creepers. Hey, we got some lights on the uh, the 7A. Do we? Yeah, we got Oh, yeah, look at that. So the, these drivers probably don't have race receivers in their helmets. <laughs> no, so they don't know. So they don't know. So um, I think he's telling them to pull off. Yep. So, I think so. every driver in that every every real race car driver <laughs> has uh, it's called a race receiver in your helmet. So yeah. then the track crew can can talk to you. You can't talk to them, but they'll let you know when it's time to go green, uh, when to pull in. Uh, those those different deals. So we're back under green here. Good start there for the one. Marty Kleva out to the lead. Boy, how about how about the maneuvering there from Keegan Hauser? Keegan up to second place. Wes Rosinski battling in third. Yeah, Wes came from the tail end, so he's got he's got his wheels moving. Tell you what, man, Keegan Hauser in the 25 is the one on the move. The 99, James Ruge is falling back to fourth. Boy, how about the 14? Greg Hauser, he's, he's riding the cushion, Chris. You know, uh, if, uh, if if Keegan if Keegan can win here tonight, I believe we had a go kart race here one year around the infield, and he ended up winning that race. So this won't even be his first Grand Forks or River City Speedway. Feature win. Six laps to go. Side by side. Kleva and Keegan Hauser. Wes Rosinski continues to run in third. Don't look now, but here comes Craig Hauser in the 14, Chris. Moving up to fourth and closing. Oh, oh look at him switch lines. <laughs> oh, look out. <laughs> Oh, we got a slow. Oh, no. 
Lap traffic becoming an issue. We got lap traffic. Oh, they split the lap. They split the lapper. Well, that's one of the. They're gonna pull that one off. They're gonna pull that pull that one off. So we're down to. Is it six, seven? Cody Harris is in danger of being another lap bus. Whoa, slide job. They got into each other in turns one and two. You see that? They're, 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 you don't think this matters to those guys? Yeah, there's no no one's holding back here tonight. Well, that's allowed the, the three of Wes Rosinski to catch the leaders. And Wes is going to the high side. Three wide going into turns one and two. Ooh, the 25 of Keegan Hauser shuts the door. Rosinski is the man on the move. Three to go, two this time by, two laps to go. Does Rosinski have enough time? Well, the 25 of Keegan Hauser is trying to hang on, Chris. Does the three have a chance? Does I the think, three have a chance to catch the, the one? I think the three is about to run out of time. Unless the one, one makes a mistake here. White flag is out for Marty Kleva. Rosinski has moved in to second place. He needs to throw a slider here going into the last turn. Here he goes. He's going to make a run at it. He's here comes go. Rosinski. Oh, and he's cut off. <laughs> Cut off by Kleva, who hangs on for the feature school bus victory. Rosinski second, and the John Deere bus of Keegan Hauser third, and just inching out for fourth is the 14 of Craig Hauser. Marty, Ricky, Bobby. Wild, wild night comes down to the final turn in our final feature. A dream come true for both you and I to call a school bus race. And they pull it into victory lane. We're back after this. You know what? No matter what you win, celebrate. A jump off top, a little wing dance for Marty Kleva, who's fired up to take home the checkered flag in our school bus race here tonight. Just holding off Wes Rosinski. Another lap. Put a different situation. Let's go to Chad Hoff. Get your stuffed dog now and celebrate. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Marty Clayma. Yep. Ah, what a way to finish things off here. And what, really, what was a beautiful night here at the Bull Ring. Brian, Sean, Chris Shearick back with you to wrap things up. And, and Chris, we weren't sure what to expect out of the track. For the most part, it held up. It got a little rough. Cars got a little tight towards the end of some races, but ultimately it was very competitive throughout, no matter what class you watched. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, with the, with the weather that we had, with the rain that we had, the, the track crew did a very, very, very good job, you know, giving us a track that we can, you know, we can race on. Um, we had a couple last lap passes. We had, you know, passes for the lead. Really, Tyler Peterson was the only one that kind of, raced from the start or from the front and kind of never looked back but everyone else there was passing for the lead yeah it was a fun night of racing and now kind of hitting this middle part of summer once you get to july 4th it's kind of the back stretch and when points races start to heaten up and start to tighten up a little bit and everybody's trying to keep their gear fresh this is where things kind of where the separation starts to begin more or less yep and that's and that's you, you saw that with dustin strand you know going back to the pits and wanting to come back on the track uh, he knew, you know, Griseth was out. He knew Edgington was out. So he's he's like, if I just get on the track and get those much-needed points, that could win him the championship. Yep. Well, it was a lot of fun, Chris. Thanks for being here, man. Thanks, thanks for having me. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, it yes. was. Our, another year for us uh, here at River City Speedway. Glad we could at least get one show in. The fair night weather curse is finally broken. We lost both shows last year. We lost our other show on Friday night, but we were able to get this one in, and we're glad you could join us here throughout the evening. Congratulations to all our feature victories, feature winner, feature winners here tonight. We had some melees. We had a lot of fun. And, yep, we even had some wrecks. That'll do it for us.
Be sure to tune in for Women's Premier League Soccer on Friday at 6 p.m. For Chris Sherrick, I'm Brian Sean. So long.